The Gurhara Pratihara dynasty, also known as the Pratihara Empire, was an imperial power during the late classical period on the Indian subcontinent, that ruled much of northern India from the mid-8th to the 11th century. They ruled first at Ujjain and later at Kanauj. The Gurhara Pratiharas were instrumental in containing Arab armies moving east of the Indus River. Nagabada I defeated the Arab army under Junaid and Tamin during the Caliphate campaigns in India. Under Nagabada II, the Gurhara Pratiharas became the most powerful dynasty in northern India. He was succeeded by his son Ramabhadra, who ruled briefly before being succeeded by his son, Mahira Bhoja. Under Bhoja and his successor Mahendrapala I, the Pratihara Empire reached its peak of prosperity and power. By the time of Mahendrapala, the extent of its territory rivaled that of the Gupta Empire stretching from the border of Sindh in the west to Bengal in the east and from the Himalayas in the north to areas past the Narmada in the south. The expansion triggered a tripartite power struggle with the Rashtrakuta and Pala empires for control of the Indian subcontinent. During this period, Imperial Pratihara took the title of Maharajadiraja of Aryavarta, Great King of Kings of India. Gurhara Pratihara are known for their sculptures, carved panels and open pavilion style temples. The greatest development of their style of temple building was at Kajuraho, now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The power of the Pratiharas was weakened by dynastic strife. It was further diminished as a result of a great raid led by the Rashtrakuta ruler Indra III who, in about 916, sacked Kanauj. Under a succession of rather obscure rulers, the Pratiharas never regained their former influence. Their feudatories became more and more powerful, one by one throwing off their allegiance until, by the end of the 10th century, the Pratiharas controlled little more than the Gangetic Dove. Their last important king, Rajapala, was driven from Kanauj by Mahmud of Ghazni in 1018. Topic: <inaudible> Etymology and Origin. The origin of the dynasty and the meaning of the term Gurhara in its name is a topic of debate among historians. The rulers of this dynasty used the self-designation Pratihara", for their clan, and never referred to themselves as Guryaras. The imperial Pratiharas could have emphasized their Kshatriya, instead of Gurhara, identity for political reasons. However, at local levels Pratiharas were not wary of projecting their tribal Gurhara identity. They claimed descent from the legendary hero Lakshmana, who is said to have acted as a Pratihara door keeper", for his brother Rama. K. A. Nilakanta Sastri theorized that the ancestors of the Pratiharas served the Rashtrakutas, and the term Pratihara derives from the title of their office in the Rashtrakuta court. Multiple inscriptions of their neighboring dynasties describe the Pratiharas as Gurhara. The term Gurhara Pratihara occurs only in the Rajor inscription of a feudatory ruler named Mathanadeva, who describes himself as a Gurhara Pratihara. Another Pratihara king named Hariraja is also mentioned as a ferocious Gurhara Garjad Gurjara in the Kadwaha inscription. According to one school of thought, Gurhara was the name of the territory see Gurhara Desha originally ruled by the Pratiharas. Gradually, the term came to denote the people of this territory. An opposing theory is that Gurhara was the name of the tribe to which the dynasty belonged, and Pratihara was a clan of this tribe. Several historians consider Guryaras to be the ancestors of the modern Gur or Gujar tribe. The proponents of the tribal designation theory argue that the Rajor inscription mentions the phrase, all the fields cultivated by the Guryaras. Here, the term, Gurhara, obviously refers to a group of people rather than a region. The Pampa Bharata refers the Gurhara Pratihara king Mahipala as a Gurhara king. Rama Shankar Tripathi argues that here Gurhara can only refer to the king's ethnicity, and not territory, since the Pratiharas ruled a much larger area of which Gurhara Desha was only a small part. Critics of this theory, such as D. C. Ganguly, argue that the term Gurhara is used as a demonym in the phrase cultivated by the Guryaras. Several ancient sources, including inscriptions, clearly mention Gurhara as the name of a country. 
Shantarani Sharma notes that an inscription of Galaka in 795 CE states that Nagabada I, the founder of the imperial Pratihara dynasty, conquered the invincible Guryaras, which makes it unlikely that the Pratiharas were themselves Guryaras. However, she does concede that imperial Pratiharas were indeed known as Guryaras, on account of their nationality. She mentions two groups of people who were known as Guryaras, and draws a line between them, i.e. Guryaras who were an ethnic people and Guryaras who were nationals of Gurjaradisa Gurhara country. According to her, Gujars are the descendants of ethnic Guryaras, and have nothing to do with imperial Pratiharas and Shalukas who were also known as Guryaras, due to their Gurhara nationality. Among those who believe that the term Gurhara was originally a tribal designation, there are disagreements over whether they were native Indians or foreigners. The proponents of the foreign origin theory point out that the Gurhara Pratiharas suddenly emerged as a political power in North India around 6th century CE, shortly after the Huna invasion of that region. Critics of the foreign origin theory argue that there is no conclusive evidence of their foreign origin, they were well assimilated in the Indian culture. Moreover, if they invaded Indian through the northwest, it is inexplicable why would they choose to settle in the semi-arid area of present-day Rajasthan, rather than the fertile Indo-Gangetic plain. According to the Agnavansha legend given in the later manuscripts of Prithviraj Raso, the Pratiharas and three other Rajput dynasties originated from a sacrificial fire pit Agnakunda at Mount Abu. Some colonial-era historians interpreted this myth to suggest a foreign origin for these dynasties. According to this theory, the foreigners were admitted in the Hindu caste system after performing a fire ritual. However, this legend is not found in the earliest available copies of Prithviraj Raso. It is based on a Paramara legend. The 16th century Rajput bards probably extended the original legend to include other dynasties, including the Pratiharas, in order to foster Rajput unity against the Mughals. Topic. History The original center of Pratihara power is a matter of controversy. R. C. Majumdar, on the basis of a verse in the Harivamsha Purana, AD 783, the interpretation of which he conceded was not free from difficulty, held that Vatsaraha ruled at Ujjain. Dasharatha Sharma, interpreting it differently, located the original capital in the Binmala Jailer area. M. W. Meister and Shanta Rani Sharma concur with his conclusion in view of the fact that the writer of the Jaina narrative Kuvalayamala states that it was composed at Jailer in the time of Vatsaraha in AD 778, which is five years before the composition of Harivamsha Purana. <laughs> Early rulers Nagabada I extended his control east and south from Mandar, conquering Malwa as far as Gwalior and the port of Baruch in Gujarat. He established his capital at Avanti in Malwa, and checked the expansion of the Arabs, who had established themselves in Sindh. In this battle 738 CE, Nagabada led a confederacy of Gurhara Pratiharas to defeat the Muslim Arabs who had till then been pressing on victorious through West Asia and Iran. Nagabada I was followed by two weak successors, who were in turn succeeded by Vatsraha 775-805. Conquest of Kanauj and further expansion The metropolis of Kanauj had suffered a power vacuum following the death of Harsha without an heir, which resulted in the disintegration of the empire of Harsha. This space was eventually filled by Yashovarman around a century later but his position was dependent upon an alliance with Lalitaditya Muktapita. When Muktapita undermined Yashovarman, a tripartite struggle for control of the city developed, involving the Pratiharas, whose territory was at that time to the west and north, the Palace of Bengal in the east and the Rashtrakutas, whose base lay at the south in the Deccan. Vatsraha successfully challenged and defeated the Pala ruler Dharmapala and Dantidurga, the Rashtrakuta king, for control of Kanauj. 
Around 786, the Rashtrakuta ruler Dhruva c. 780-793 crossed the Narmada River into Malwa, and from there tried to capture Kanauj. Vatsraha was defeated by the Dhruva Dharavarsha of the Rashtrakuta dynasty around 800. Vatsraha was succeeded by Nagabhata II 805 who was initially defeated by the Rashtrakuta ruler Govinda III 793 but later recovered Malwa from the Rashtrakutas, conquered Kanauj and the Indo-Gangetic plain as far as Bihar from the palace, and again checked the Muslims in the west. He rebuilt the great Shiva temple at Somnath in Gujarat, which had been demolished in an Arab raid from Sindh. Kanauj became the center of the Gurhara Pratihara state, which covered much of northern India during the peak of their power. C. 836 to 910, Rambhadra 833 C. 836 briefly succeeded Nagabhata II. Mahira Bhoja c. 836 expanded the Pratihara dominions west to the border of Sindh, east to Bengal, and south to the Narmada. His son, Mahendrapal I expanded further eastwards in Magadha, Bengal, and Assam. <laughs> Decline Boja II (910–912) was overthrown by Mahipala I (912–944). Several feudatories of the empire took advantage of the temporary weakness of the Gurhara Pratiharas to declare their independence, notably the Paramaras of Malwa, the Chandelas of Bundelkhand, the Kalachuris of Mahakashal, the Tomaras of Haryana, and the Chahamanas of Shakambari. The South Indian Emperor Indra III c. 914-928 of the Rashtrakuta dynasty briefly captured Kanauj in 916, and although the Pratiharas regained the city, their position continued to weaken in the 10th century, partly as a result of the drain of simultaneously fighting off Turkic attacks from the west, the attacks from the Rashtrakuta dynasty from the south and the Pala advances in the east. The Gurhara Pratiharas lost control of Rajasthan to their feudatories, and the Chandelas captured the strategic fortress of Gwalior in central India around 950. By the end of the 10th century the Gurhara Pratihara domains had dwindled to a small state centered on Kanauj. Mahmud of Ghazni captured Kanauj in 1018, and the Pratihara ruler Rajapala fled. He was subsequently captured and killed by the Chandela ruler Vidyadhara. The Chandela ruler then placed Rajapala's son Trilochanpala on the throne as a proxy. Jasapala, the last Gurhara Pratihara ruler of Kanauj, died in 1036. <laughs> Gurhara Pratihara art There are notable examples of architecture from the Gurhara Pratihara era, including sculptures and carved panels. Their temples, constructed in an open pavilion style. One of the most notable Gurhara Pratihara style of architecture was Kajuraho, built by their vassals, the Chandelas of Bundelkhand. <laughs> Maru Gurhara architecture Maru Gurhara architecture was developed during Gurhara Pratihara Empire. Topic: Bateshwar Hindu Temples Complex. Bateshwar Hindu Temples, Madhya Pradesh, was constructed during the Gurhara Pratihara Empire between 8th to 11th century. Topic: Baroli Temples Complex. Baroli Temples Complex are eight temples, built by the Gurhara Pratiharas, is situated within a walled enclosure. <laughs> Caliphate campaigns in India Junaid, the successor of Qasim, finally subdued the Hindu resistance within Sindh. Taking advantage of the conditions in western India, which at that time was covered with several small states, Junaid led a large army into the region in early 738 CE. 
Dividing this force into two he plundered several cities in southern Rajasthan, western Malwa, and Gujarat. Indian inscriptions confirm this invasion but record the Arab success only against the smaller states in Gujarat. They also record the defeat of the Arabs at two places. The southern army moving south into Gujarat was repulsed at Navsari by the South Indian Emperor Vikramaditya II of the Chalukya dynasty and Rashtrakutas. The army that went east, after sacking several places, reached Avanti whose ruler Nagabada Gurhara Pratihara trounced the invaders and forced them to flee. After his victory Nagabada took advantage of the disturbed conditions to acquire control over the numerous small states up to the border of Sindh. Junaid probably died from the wounds inflicted in the battle with the Gurhara Pratihara. His successor Tamin organized a fresh army and attempted to avenge Junaid's defeat towards the close of the year 738 CE. But this time Nagabada, with his Chohan and Guhilat feudatories, met the Muslim army before it could leave the borders of Sindh. The battle resulted in the complete rout of the Arabs who fled broken into Sindh with the Gurhara Pratihara close behind them. The Arabs crossed over to the other side of the Indus River, abandoning all their lands to the victorious Hindus. The local chieftains took advantage of these conditions to re-establish their independence. Subsequently, the Arabs constructed the city of Mansura on the other side of the wide and deep Indus, which was safe from attack. This became their new capital in Sindh. Thus began the reign of the imperial Gurhara Pratiharas. In the Gwalior inscription, it is recorded that Gurhara Pratihara Emperor Nagabada crushed the large army of the powerful Malechcha king. This large army consisted of cavalry, infantry, siege artillery, and probably a force of camels. Since Tamin was a new governor he had a force of Syrian cavalry from Damascus, local Arab contingents, converted Hindus of Sindh, and foreign mercenaries like the Turkics. Altogether the invading army may have had anywhere between 10-15,000 cavalry, 5,000 infantry, and 2,000 camels. The Arab chronicler Suleiman describes the army of the Pratiharas as it stood in 851 CE. The ruler of Gurjars maintains numerous forces and no other Indian prince has so fine a cavalry. He is unfriendly to the Arabs, still he acknowledges that the king of the Arabs is the greatest of rulers. Among the princes of India there is no greater foe of the Islamic faith than he. He has got riches, and his camels and horses are numerous. <laughs> Legacy Historians of India, since the days of Elphinstone, have wondered at the slow progress of Muslim invaders in India, as compared with their rapid advance in other parts of the world. The Arabs possibly only stationed small invasions independent of the caliph. Arguments of doubtful validity have often been put forward to explain this unique phenomenon. Currently it is believed that it was the power of the Gurhara Pratihara army that effectively barred the progress of the Muslims beyond the confines of Sindh, their first conquest for nearly 300 years. In the light of later events this might be regarded as the chief contribution of the Gurhara Pratiharas to the history of India. <inaudible> <inaudible> List of rulers Nagabada I Kakustha and Devaraja Vatsaraha Nagabada II, 800 to 833. Ramabhadra, 833 to 836. Mahira Boja or Boja I, 836 to 885. Mahendrapala I, 885 to 910. Boja II, 910 to 913. Mahipala I, 913 to 944. Mahendrapala II, 944 to 948. Devapala, 948 to 954. Vinayakapala, 954 to 955. Mahipala II, 955 to 956. Vijayapala II, 956 to 960. Rajapala, 960, 1018. 
Trilochanapala, ten eighteen to ten twenty seven Yasapala, ten twenty four to ten thirty six 